the last dog I had was never afraid of anything. Well, different dogs are different dogs and you have to deal with the dog you have. Welcome back guys. going to do uh, another podcast here. Um, again, this is based off of a, this is actually a Facebook message that I got playing um, some ketchup on it, but uh, I thought it was a good one and it's another one that I can kind of relate relate to so i'm going to use this guy's question his name is travis brown um i i probably can piggyback on it with some personal stuff that i'm going through right now with makina um makina is a good is is proving to be a a real nice little study um some differences in our our approach to training which i think is going to be valuable a new series for us which i think is a lot of fun um going to be interesting to share a lot of that with you but uh, there are a few things or, or quirky things about her. I don't know that I'm sold on the idea that it's a breed specific thing or if it's a dog specific thing, because I do feel that every time I train a Labrador, they all have their own little quirks as well, it seems. So let me read you. Um, this is a message that came from a, uh, Facebook that was originally a message about products. Um, he was looking, he bought some of our, uh, tracking dog products um, he said here also, also, um, wondering if you can help. So this is in response after it says also wondering if you could get, if I could get some advice, not with the kit, but with my pup, she's a five month old border collie with a nose that never stops. She's very well behaved. And I've been watching a lot of your videos. I've learned a ton. She has as well. My concern with her is that she's afraid of everything, new people, other dogs, other than the ones at our house, a twig snapping in the woods when we're walking. She was even afraid of a buck mount that I got back last week. If I'm going to be training her for deer recovery, she can't be afraid of things like this. I have a feeling it will be very distracting to her. Any help would be appreciated. I know you have made a solid business of this and I don't expect a free handout. Thank you. So Travis, I'm going to send you a message and let you know that we talk about this a little bit more on this podcast. But so you've got a dog that I think you have to take a step back from and you got to put it into perspective and realize that you've got a five month old puppy. Now I know what that can feel like because when you think about it, it it is really strange that we don't have them for very long and it feels like a long time. Chances are you probably got the dog about, let's say eight weeks. I would say that's a very average age for most people to get their dogs. So eight weeks is two months you've the dog's five months old you've had the dog for three months three months is 12 weeks 12 weeks is not very long so it's a blink of an eye and so you got to think about all the stuff that has happened in this dog's life over the last five months since it was born more specifically three months since it was taken away from its litter mates that's a lot um so different dogs have different personalities i think the reason why we do we get concerned why you're maybe concerned about this and why um people have issues with things like this is because well the last dog i had was never afraid of anything well different dogs are different dogs and you have to deal with the dog you have so makina so i'll let me share you some stuff on mine so makina is really doing a nice job she's less than that of age she's 15 weeks so she's not even four months old yet. She's really afraid of certain noises. It started out with a washing machine, uh, like a dishwasher. Um, she panicked when that dishwasher would kick on. It's not very loud. <sighs> That's about what it makes for a noise. She f- couldn't stand it. It's been over a month now, and she's finally starting to... She's heard it a lot. I, wa- I, run, I run the dishes every day. So she's heard it long enough now where it's it's become something that she's realized that's not the end of the world, okay? Uh, you, if you watch our Makina series that we're working on right now called Make the Machine, she, I had a terrible session with her. Um, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago now, but I turned the shop vac on down at the shop and I was, I was shop vacuuming out my fishing shack, my shanty, and I was cleaning it out with the shop back and Ben was holding on to her at the time and she started shaking uncontrollably I mean complete shutdown 
It was a shop vac. It was 15, 20 yards away from her. It wasn't that loud. She wasn't that close. It made her come unglued. Then I went outside, not making the best decision. Then I went outside on lead because we were going to talk about, it was like our first or second session of heel work. And I it was very cold and we were going ice fishing and I wanted to see my four-wheeler would start. So I was having some issues with it starting in the cold. So I went over to the four-wheeler and I started the four-wheeler. She was on the lead. I stepped on the lead so that she wouldn't run off. I turned and started the four-wheeler and she freaked out. So I doubled... I went with a double whammy there. I went shop vac, scare the hell out of her. Four-wheeler, really scare the hell out of her. Then go try to train her? Not a, not a chance. So that sequence of events created a lot of issues. She hears a truck drive on the road and she freaks out. I had her on a, one of our sessions. I was free casting her and working her through our property. And an airplane went over and she froze and just about ran back to the house. So do I have an issue? Yes. Am I concerned about it? No. Will we get through it? Yes. Is it going to take some time? Yes. Did I create some of the issue? I probably didn't help some of the issue. I don't know if I created it or if it was just a part of her personality. She's a little skittish about stuff. It's always new. Anytime it's new, she's skittish. So I got to look at it and go, okay, I know this is something that's going to be there. Going forward, I have to be able to kind of crystal ball it a little bit and say, and I have to really start thinking about, you know, I always talk, we all understand gun shyness. Like we're going to avoid gun shyness. So we don't let the dogs hear the fireworks on the 4th of July. We don't let the neighbors shoot their guns on the weekends when they're, when the dog's out in the backyard, whatever the scenario is specific to you, we don't allow it to become a problem because we anticipate it coming and we're proactive. That's what you should do. Now I have to be hypersensitive to the fact that there's other stuff that I wouldn't normally expect to be an issue. And I got to ease into it. I got to have like this second guard up with it to make sure that I don't allow it to become a problem. So how do you get past it? Well, first of all, it takes time and you got a five month old dog and you've only, we, we start talking about the numbers in this. You've only had her, the pup for three months. So let's wait another three months and see what happens. But what I think you can't do is you can't ignore the issues. You can't put gas on that fire and create bigger issues. It's a hundred percent. So Makina has gotten a lot better at certain things too. She used to not come to me when I called her. She used to want to shy away from me. I spent a lot of evenings when everyone else went to bed, just sitting on the floor with her and letting her come over and investigate me and love her up and, she went through a phase where recall sucked. Absolutely terrible. To the point where I had to put her on a lead because it took too long to get her back in. We've worked through that. I, you're going to see it in the series. I jiggle, you know, I use a, a, a food dish and I shake some food in it to make some sound. I did that for about three or four days in a row and I gave her kibble. And then I stopped giving her kibble when she came in. And the habit was boom there, like open the door, she comes running in. She's got a quirky way of doing it because the snow has gotten deep. So she doesn't like coming up the steps. She runs to the side and comes in across. Now the snow is going to melt pretty quick. And when the snow melts, I don't know if she's gonna be able to jump up there to get into the deck that way. She might have to, I might have to go back and teach her how to use the stairs better. She doesn't like the sound of the stairs because they're noisy. So those are all things that I understand and I'm anticipating and I'm realizing we're just going to have to, it's going to be part of our training process. This is the stuff that has nothing to do with hunting. This has nothing to do with retrieving, pointing birds and any of that fun stuff that all we care about with hunting dogs is that stuff. You're going to have this dog track for you, it sounds like. It has nothing to do with the tracking stuff. It has everything to do with like the day-to-day, -day, everyday stuff. You can practice it, work on it specifically in micro sessions, baby, baby steps, little tiny incremental things. And then beyond that, the big picture fix is get that dog to develop such confidence and trust that there's nothing that can intimidate it. That's like building self-esteem in a kid. If we don't build self-esteem in our kids and they go to school and they get picked on, they're going to fall apart. Every kid gets picked on. It's uncomfortable. It's, it's a reality. I was picked on. My parents did a pretty good job of building up my self-esteem. But some kids picked on me so much it didn't, it still hurt and still screwed me up. Some kids picked on me and my self-esteem was good enough where I went, you know what, I can get through this. 
that's what we're doing with our dogs is we're we're building their confidence up not so much now you have the one end of the spectrum the other person that's listening to this might say i have zero concern with that my dog my dog is the one that picks on the other kids it's so confident and bully like so those ones you got to knock off the the stool once in a while those ones you got to have them realize no you're not going to be the smart ass you're going to follow the rules and that's a respect thing so there's a there's a this respect and trust and confidence thing that has to get developed and it's no it's not as linear as black and white there's just all kinds of gray and so we gotta we gotta that's what you have to be doing is working on building those things up i gotta work on coddling her to a point with certain things but not so much that because she becomes a big baby so sometimes she's gonna have to learn to deal with some pressure and get through it sometimes she's gonna have to learn that you know what when things get really bad i can trust dad he'll help me get through it but that doesn't mean i bail them out it doesn't mean i make them into a little baby pansy no we're not going to turn them into a little feeble thing like that but we're also not going to be so hard on them that we don't don't understand the idea that you know what you're going through some shit and i'm going to help you get through it i'm not going to take care of it for you i'm not going to be an enabler i'm not going to okay you are shutting down i'm not going to okay this behavior but i'm also not going to be such a bully that uh it doesn't allow you to to grow emotionally and connectively with me so that's i think what you got to look at with this i'm doing it with makina in lots of different scenarios you're going to have to do it with this dog build the dog's confidence find out what the things are that it's hesitant about the deer head that came in the house hang the deer head up and every time the dog comes in and freaks out about it, just stand there with the minute for a minute with the dog until the dog starts to settle and get comfortable. And then move away from the deer head. There's one good example of the deer head didn't do anything to me. But it's new. And the first time it's scary. And then the next time you get a little closer, and the next time you go, and pretty soon feed the dog right there and let the dog be comfortable in the same room with the new deer head. Something real positive probably gets them over that hesitation and all of a sudden they go, you know what, it's not that bad and then they don't even notice it. It's like the dishwasher for Makina. Last night I'm out here and the dishwasher's kicking in and we're making retrieves and she doesn't even blink because that retrieve was more valuable than her fear that she used to have of a machine, dishwashing machine that she thought was, I think she thinks they're growling at her. That's why I think she's intimidated by vehicles. She doesn't like walking by them when they're parked. She really doesn't like them when they're running. So how, how will I get her past that? She's going to have to get really good at walking by and parked and not running. And then I'll start a truck and I'll leave it at a great distance and I'll make sure she's okay with that. And then we'll get a little closer, then we'll get a little closer, then we'll walk next to it. It's going to take steps and it's going to take time. So you just can't rush through that stuff. That's it, guys. That's another episode. Uh, I hope that helps. Travis, I'm going to send you a message. Do me a favor if you would. Leave us a rating. Uh, if you could, uh, wherever you listen to the podcast, that's the best way for us to help grow this and get this, uh, make it so that more people um, are potentially helped by it. And that's our intentions with this is to help as many people as we can with training their own dogs. So best of luck to you guys. Appreciate all of your support. Mm-hmm.